Are you surprised that Laddie plays the banjo? Well, don't be. Not only does he play, he's a sailplane pilot too, and a cyclist. He once rode all the way through Arizona, from Utah down to Mexico. And he's hiked the Arizona Trail too, all 800 miles of it. Laddie grew up in small town rural Avondale, and he assumed his role as an educator naturally. A chip off the old block, if you will. Both parents were teachers, and his father was a principal and a district administrator with a school named for him. I guess I was born to education, though I never realized that, never occurred to me. And yet I saw in a small, very poor community the role education had. It was, uh, it was a way and a place where individuals, no matter what their station in life, could have a place to connect and could begin the path on what I think is education's greatest uh, power, the escalator into whatever uh, an individual is willing to, uh, to seek and to develop the capacity to do. That education accelerator was a few years away yet for Laddie. He came of age in the rural Arizona of the 1950s, a slower lifestyle connected to the cycles of the seasons and the farms around him horsing around with his brother, and graduating from Litchfield Park High School, a homecoming king with a paper crown. High school gave way to university, and Laddie moved up to Flagstaff, attending NAU. He was fortunate enough to land a Phelps Dodge scholarship, and with his expenses taken care of, he could concentrate on his studies. It wasn't long before he came into contact with the first of several mentors in his life. And I had a burning bush experience in my sophomore year. Uh, a, uh, Ed Walker, a faculty member in sociology, brilliant. His way of seeing the world uh, in an introductory class to sociology, the life of the mind, the way in which an intellectual work really set me on fire. And I decided then and subsequently in conversations with Ed Walker that I really wanted to be an academic. An academic with his sights set on an advanced degree. Core moved to St. Louis, working first on his master's in political science at Washington University and staying there for his doctoral studies, eventually joining the faculty when he finished. But the university chancellor, the legendary Tom Elliott, had his eye on Laddie and groomed him for a leadership position. Just at that moment, Washington University, which had decided to take its hilltop campus, the balance of the university, into complete national status. And Tom Elliott, then the chancellor, led that charge. And as he did so, he turned to me when I was quite young, 32, and asked if I would be a a senior officer in that university. It was just the beginning for Laddie. He excelled in his new leadership role and was soon appointed vice chancellor. Then, in 1976, he was named president of the University of Vermont. During his first week on the job, the staff challenged Coor, who they thought of as a city boy, to participate in a cow milking contest. His Arizona roots paid off, and he won the contest much to their surprise. Well, it turns out those Arizona roots run deep, and they exerted a gentle pull on Laddie during his time in Vermont. By 1990, he was ready to move on, and so he became the new president of a university for the second time in his career, back home here at ASU. I could see at ASU this uh, incredible moment of uh, quality and opportunity for the university to come into its own, just as I felt Phoenix and Arizona were coming into their own. And uh, I guess I'm a, I'm a junkie for that kind of thing. It just really captivated me. Laddie spent 12 years at ASU, stepping down in 2002. An avid outdoorsman, he now enjoys these hobbies with his wife, Elva but he has too much institutional knowledge to spend all his time in the backcountry and thus continues to serve the community as CEO for the Center for the Future of Arizona, working on prospects to improve Arizona 
and ways to reduce our high school dropout rate. But he plays another part as well, the role of a mentor to promising people who want to make a difference. For me, I think Dr. Kaur redefined what mentor meant. Courtney Klein had an idea when she was at ASU. What if she could mobilize young people to help solve the greatest challenges faced by communities around the world? Well, with a mix of hard work and the guidance of Laddie Kaur, New Global Citizens was born. I mean, from when Dr. Kaur became involved in New Global Citizens, we had four high schools, a pilot program in the East Valley of Arizona, you know, 50 kids involved in the program. And now, organizationally, we have demand this summer from 350 young people across the country, 20 states nationwide of these high school students that want to take action and they want to use their voice to create positive change in their communities and around the world. And I think about that ripple effect. I mean, that wouldn't have happened, one, if Dr. Kaur hadn't believed in me, and two, if he hadn't been there every step of the way to support me. And she's not the only one Laddie Kaur has enabled to succeed. He's an academic, a mentor, and a leader. Plus, he's not a half-bad musician as well. We celebrate his life, his accomplishments, and his continued role as an advocate for educational opportunities.